Learn how to make yourself some nifty and some cool neon vector buttons using Illustrator. Also, stay tuned until the very end of today's video if you're interested in starting your very own YouTube channel, or maybe you're already a content creator. I'm going to show you an awesome resource for not only saving time as a content creator on YouTube, but also how to boost video views and gain more subscribers. It's a free browser extension known as TubeBuddy, which also has a few paid versions as well, and I've actually been using TubeBuddy myself for nearly two years. I find it essential to my workflow and my growth, and I'm going to show you more about that later in today's video. In Illustrator, we're going to be working on web-based graphics today, so the neon vector buttons work best as an RGB document and a screen resolution of 72 ppi. The dimensions don't actually matter so much right now, so let's generate a document and make some neat vector button designs. Select a background colour and then press M for the rectangle tool. Cover the canvas with a rectangle and then lock it down in place like so. In the colour palette, located in the bottom left of your screen, you're going to want to use a stroke only and the colour doesn't matter too much right now. Then press L for the ellipse tool and generate a perfect circle by holding down shift and clicking and dragging. Now press command or control R to open up your rulers and then drag down a guide somewhere like mine here on the top of the circle. You need to press C on your keyboard for the scissors tool or you can just simply locate them in the toolbar and then make two clicks on the circle like I'm doing here. You can then select the smaller segment and remove it by pressing backspace on your keyboard. We then need another guide that's going to run down the exact middle of the circle shape as this is going to be a power symbol for a vector button today. Increase the stroke weight of the circular symbol and then head into the stroke window and round off the ends like I'm doing here. Now take the pen tool by pressing P on your keyboard and draw in a line right down the centre of the symbol. When you have your symbol ready, select both components and then head into the object and outline stroke option. This is going to turn your stroke design into a vector path. And then finally open up the pathfinder window and unite both shapes together as one vector shape. We're now going to make use of the appearance panel in Illustrator to create the neon effects for our button designs. In the top right fly down menu, click add a new stroke and then drag it below the fill layer. Go back into the fill layer and adjust the colour to an almost kind of white shade of whatever colour that you want to use. So for me, I'm going to use a kind of white light pink colour. Now click back onto the stroke layer and add in the colour that you want to work with and increase the stroke weight. Still working within the appearance panel in the stroke layer, head into the effects options and add a Gaussian blur. Just make sure to keep the preview option selected and adjust the gradient until you see fit. A quick tip for you all, if your blur effects look quite bad, head into the raster effect settings and increase the values right here. This will ultimately smoothen out your design and the blur effects. Finally, we need to add another stroke layer in the appearance panel, but this time, make sure the layer is at the very top of all the layers. Again, apply the same colour and also a Gaussian blur, but adjust your blur settings so that you have a nice neon effect on your design like you can see on mine here. There isn't much more to do now, 
but follow along and finish your neon vector button design as I do. You can expand the appearance of the symbol so that no matter how small or how large you make the design, the blur effects will stay proportional. We now need to make the circular aspects of the vector button, so again take the ellipse tool by pressing L and then create a circle. Add a gradient fill in the colour palette to the circle. You're going to want to make a gradient that goes from black to a very dark grey. Once your gradient is ready, change the direction of the gradient in the gradient window to minus 90 degrees. We need to copy the circle with command or control C, and then we're going to duplicate it with command or control F, which will leave you with two circles in the same position. Click the top circle and rotate it by 180 degrees, and then resize it down a tiny bit. This will create an awesome yet simple effect for your button design. All that is left to do now is to bring the neon symbol over on top of your two circles, and then bring it to the front of all the objects of your design. And that's how you make a neon vector button illustrator brought to you by Satori Graphics. Now I'm going to tell you all about the awesome browser extension that I've been using for two years and how it can actually immensely help you as a content creator on YouTube. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that is going to make your life a whole lot easier as a content creator on YouTube but also it would actually help you grow your channel quicker than normal. I've seen this myself over the last two years. TubeBuddy is available on Chrome, Firefox, Safari and Internet Explorer and is totally free. However, there are three more tiers that are paid for every single month and the free version does have a lot of perks and I did use the free version myself for quite a long time. I then moved on to paid versions but you can check out all about TubeBuddy via the link in the description below. I'm briefly going to go into what main uses I utilise TubeBuddy for on my channel Satori Graphics. So firstly, the user interface of YouTube is quite frankly all over the place. It's not designed that well for content creators and accessing things like your own videos, your channel homepage, comments, messages and so forth takes time and it's laid out really poorly. TubeBuddy actually compiles the most important areas of the website for content creators into a simple drop down menu tab. I always access my channel, my videos, my analytics and my stats by using this drop down menu. This saves time and it just makes life a lot easier as a content creator. One of the second main uses of TubeBuddy for me is that when I produce a video, there is a built in system to search for keywords and tags. This helps my videos rank in YouTube search, and after all YouTube is actually a search engine much like Google. If people cannot find my videos, then they're not going to get watched, and that's quite simple. So I can research keywords in TubeBuddy, and they will show me their effectiveness on my video on my channel. Making content here on YouTube isn't a matter of just producing a video and uploading it. There's a lot of back-end work to do, such as SEO and so forth. TubeBuddy really helps with that, and I attribute a lot of my channel success to TubeBuddy helping my videos get seen. So yeah, if you're a content creator, check out TubeBuddy in the description below, and it's totally free, but there are also some paid versions too. TubeBuddy has many more uses for content creators, so go ahead and give it a look. If you want me to go deeper and more detailed into making YouTube videos, drop a comment down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, give it a like and also share it on social media so other people can see it too. Subscribe to Tutorial Graphics for weekly graphic design content. And until next time guys, design your future today.
Peace.